So if you are football's first FIFA licensed agent, and when you indeed de- de- break into the world of football as a licensed agent, there was nothing like social media around to be worried about. And Jerome Anderson was indeed football's first FIFA licensed agent. And he joins us live in the show, a man I've known for many years. Jerome, good morning. Very good morning to you, Jim. And a very, very good morning to you, Darren. How are you, Jerome? Good morning to you, uh, Jerome. I mean, where do we begin uh, the world of football agency? How much has it changed over the last few decades since you entered into it? It's changed dramatically, Jim. If I go back to how I even started in the industry, I can go back to my childhood. And as a young, very young child, my father used to take me to uh, Arsenal, which is where I had my great affinity with, um, with Arsenal Football Club. And for some reason, the players at Arsenal at that time, the likes of Mel Charles and George Easton, became very friendly with my with my dad and they looked to speak to him for advice. He was just a normal working class person and they just trusted him. But during that those early years of my life, I got to hear some incredible stories about how players were treated by not only the managers, but by the clubs and, and often saw them in, in, in tears. And as a child growing up, I saw it sort of, went to my heart and I thought if only in the context of my lifetime I could be able to help players genuinely make the most out of their careers and look after their their money which obviously was comparatively not peanuts but compared to what it is today um, you know relatively low amounts of income and the, and the old story of Alex James who was one of Arsenal's greatest ever players selling newspapers on the corner of Adam and Road um, it stuck with me for you know, for the rest of my life. And, and I endeavoured throughout the course of my, you know, 35, 40 years as, a, 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 as, as an agent to ensure that the people that I was involved with uh, were never in a situation where, where they stopped playing, yeah. that they genuinely had to worry about anything for their future. I mean, it's fair to say, I know you, Jerome, you've been very successful because you were good at it. Uh, it's quite plain and simple. You were good at it. You knew your job and you did it well. Um, you made a lot of money. But it's your belief, though, that players genuinely needed representation? Uh, absolutely, Jim. I, I can go back to the, the late, great Julie Armstrong, and he had a situation at Arsenal with, with the late Terry Neal. And he came around to my, at my house one night, I think I was about 15 or 16 at the time, literally in tears, because he was promised something by the club. It didn't happen, and ultimately uh, he left. And from being an absolute Arsenal legend, he used to run up and down that wing you know, incredibly hard for the football club throughout his career. It was something that I never, ever wanted to see any of my clients go through. Uh, and as I say, genuinely tried to ensure that um, all the boys that we ever were involved with, when they finally had to hang up their boots, <clears throat> they were looked after, they'd invested wisely, and made the most out of, uh, okay, a bit of a cliche, but what is a very, very short career. I mean, I look at that, I, I know, of course, Charlie, I've known Charlie for many years, Charlie Nicholas, you represented him when he came down from Celtic uh, and went to Arsenal. The late, great David Rowcastle. And then, you know, I look at the host of players you've represented, Tony Adams, Ian Wright, Dennis Bergkamp, David Seaman, Emmanuel Petit, Thierry Henry, were all their stories and their needs and their demands as straightforward as we might think? As we might think, and also, was it not the case that Bergkamp might well have ended up at Stamford Bridge and not Arsenal? Well, that's a fascinating story, Jim. I'm not sure if, it, if it's ever been told uh, in its entirety or, or in its truthfulness. Um, Dennis, Dennis's hero as a young man growing up was Glenn Hoddle. Uh, he, he loved wearing the number ten shirt. And finally, having suffered, you know, a difficult time in, in Italy, he decided that he'd like to come and apply his trade in uh, in England. And I worked very closely with his with his uh, Dutch agent, and we did a number of very very good transactions together, and brought some exceptional players to uh, to England. Um, and Dennis's situation was this: he had agreed, and we all had agreed in principle for him to sign for Chelsea. Wow! And uh, and literally, on, on the day of Dennis coming over with his wife, and as we all know, he, he, he wouldn't fly anymore, so he was driving. I got a phone call from the then managing director, Colin Hutchison. He said, hi, Jerome, how are you? I said, fine, thanks, Colin. He said, do you want the good news or the not so good news? So I said, well, just give me the news as it is. He said, look, we still want to sign Dennis, uh, but unfortunately, we don't have the money. And that was a real shock 
of a phone call, having worked on that for, you know, for, for, for a long time. Anyway, I put my thinking cap on. I thought, right, we've got Dennis coming over from, from abroad with his wife who's driving. It's going to take, uh, you know, several hours. So I phoned his, his personal Dutch agent. I said, explain what had happened. I said, well, I've got an idea. I said, um, would you give me permission to try and speak to an institutional club, which was Arsenal? And he said, of course. So I put the phone down. I phoned up uh, David Dean. I said, look, something's happened today. We, we may have a, an incredible opportunity to sign a player who is yet to reach his prime, was, was well known as a wonderful international player uh, for Holland, but had had a difficult time in Italy. And it's Dennis Bergkamp. I said, would, we, would you be interested? So he said, well, look, of course, I think we could be interested. But the first thing you have to do is to speak to the manager, who was Bruce Real. So I literally got in my car, I drove around to Bruce's house. I'll never forget, he opened the door. I think he had his dressing gown and his slippers on. <laughs> and I said, Bruce, I'm really sorry to trouble you. I said, but could you be interested in, in signing Dennis Burkham? And he looked me straight in the eyes and he went, Jerome, he said, if we can sign Dennis Burkham, I'll sign him tomorrow. So I then get back in the car, I go back to my office, I made a few phone calls. Um, bear in mind, Dennis is dry, still driving <clears throat> and he's completely unaware of this situation. <clears throat> so I phoned up Mr. Dean, I went round to his house, uh, went through the whole scenario of what it would take to uh, to try and sign Dennis and try to explain what, what I thought it would be a magnificent signing, not only for the football club, but for, you know, English football. Yeah, um, yeah. And he, he, he basically knew because I had such a strong affiliation to Arsenal and knew that I absolutely loved the club, that I was genuine in my belief. So we... David then organised a board, we had a board meeting, which was at his house, we went on for several hours. Um, the late, great Danny Fisman, Ken Fryer, et cetera, et cetera, were all in the house. And obviously, it, it, at the time, it was seven and a half million pounds. It was a fixed fee. Uh, Inter Milan would not, not deviate or change that price. Anyway, after several hours, uh, the board agreed to try and make it happen. I left um, David's house, got, went back to uh, my office. It's very, I think, early hours of the morning. I phoned up um, Dennis's personal agent, um, who was also on his way over, I explained the situation. And he said, right, let's see if we can make this happen. And Dennis arrived and he was told the truth. Um, and he, he, he was, really, he was, he was upset in the first instance, because as I said, Glenn was his hero. Uh, and he was looking forward to working with, with Glenn. And I said, look, if nothing else, please meet um, Bruce Rioch. Then go to Highbury, have a look around the, the marble halls and, and try and understand the history of what is a, a great, great football club, a true institution. And he agreed to that. And thankfully, he got on famously well with, uh, with, with Mr. Real and they enjoyed a fantastic working relationship. Right. Um, and the rest is the history. Rest is history. Did, uh, I beat transform you, did I beat you to that line there, Jerome? The rest is history. My God, what a signing he was uh, for Arsenal. Jerome, stay with us because we'll bring it right up today along the way. Jerome Anderson uh, with us live right now on Talk Sport. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.